How does a very strong, capable mom and ministry leader spiral into a life of anxiety, depression, and OCD? Well, you just described our guest today, Dick, who's going to share her story from panic to praise. Sarah Ball is with us, and her story of overcoming will definitely give you fresh hope. All this and more coming up on Lifeline Today. Welcome to the program today. You know, let me prepare you for our program today because I believe mm. it's going to minister to a lot of people. Our guest today is Sarah Ball and she's gone through quite a journey that she's going to share with us. And when you hear her story, mm -hmm. uh, you may be one, you know, one of those that need to call for prayer and just receive ministry, receive encouragement, because I know what it's going to relate to a lot of people. Well, welcome to the program, welcome, Sarah. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you. So good Thanks to have for you having here. me. Yeah. Sarah, you're from? I'm from Coldale, yes. Alberta, which is just outside of yeah. Lethbridge. Mm -hmm. You're a mom, have yes. five children. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And a very busy woman yes. as well. Mm -hmm. You're a writer, mm -hmm. you're a blogger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything That's awesome. Anything else you want to add to that? Oh my goodness, the list goes on. I'm yes. a very busy woman. Very yep. busy woman. <laughs> yes. Yes. Which then only just makes this story that much more significant mm -hmm. because you do have all these other responsibilities yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh, then ended up experiencing uh, just a real di a spiral, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. And you know, I'm not like any, or I'm a lot like many other women out there who have a lot of responsibility, a lot of things on their so plate. So you think this is pretty common then? Yes, more common than we know, Well, it seems like, you know, wow. the super mom syndrome yes. is huge yeah. out there. Yeah, You know, it do is. it all, yes. work, have a children, lot of pressure. look after them, mm -hmm. and then all the, you know, church activities yep. and involvements and things yep. like that. Yep. And you're a writer, mm -hmm. so that would be another thing. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah. just tell us a little bit about your story. Sure. Um, take us on your journey. How did you, as that capable mm -hmm. person, spiral into the life of uh, dis depression, despair, anxiety, and then OCD? Yeah, it's... Um, you know, I've always considered myself a suck it up princess kind of person, very <laughs> strong. A lot of people always relied on me. Sarah will know what to do when the walls come tumbling down. Yeah. Uh, very dependable. And uh, there was a moment where someone had prayed over me and they said, Sarah, you're going to have a deliverance ministry in the area of anxiety, depression, and OCD. And my response was, well, yeah, I can do that. I can tell people to be tougher and <laughs> suck it up and pray. And oh my uh, goodness. yeah, that's dangerous thought. Yeah. So I thought, yeah, I could totally see that being it a good fit. A and I'm a writer thought. and yeah. And it was about a year later that I started with burnout, just mm. being tired. And I just had a, my fifth baby and a little bit of that postpartum tired, but still not giving up any ministry or any other tasks. Mm -hmm. And that tiredness eventually just turned into a little bit of depression. Mm -hmm. And eventually that turned into um, a really severe breakdown that ended up being anxiety, panic attacks, which eventually led into more severe mental illness like OCD. So it was a slow process, but it seemed like all of a sudden So you happened. slid into this. Mm -hmm. what, what's yeah. that timeline? Just so it to help me. Too. Um, I'd say about a year to two years. Really? So a year okay. from when I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm just really tired and I just don't, I can't handle the things I used to be able to handle mm -hmm. to full blown mm -hmm. disability. But you started having these panic attacks. Mm -hmm. And tell us about the day that you were having a panic attack yeah. and you had to call 911 sure. on yourself. Yeah, for well, yourself. I had gone through a really stressful season. My mom had had a stroke and had several other people had passed away and it was just a very unsettling season that I was in. And so I was taking on a lot of responsibility and I could tell that I just was not doing well and not mm. coping well. And uh, one day I woke up in the morning and I hit the treadmill and I started running and I thought, wow, my heart rate is racing really fast. Mm. Um, and so I thought I better get down and just kind of sit down. Well, it didn't, it didn't go down. Mm. And so I thought, oh, that's not good. And then I just started pacing around the house, hoping to feel better. And it just began to escalate. And I thought, I'm having a heart attack. I can't breathe. My throat's closing in. My chest hurts. Um, I was shaking, tremoring, feeling lightheaded. And I said to myself, I need to find a place because my husband was gone. I had a bunch of kids in the house and mm -hmm. sleepover kids. And, and I thought, where can I lay down 
to die in case somebody, so they can find me. And that's when I grabbed, when I knew I had that thought. I really? thought I better phone 911. Was that your first panic attack or no. had you had others? I'd had them before mm -hmm. during like really traumatic events. Mm -hmm. um, I'd had about two in my mm -hmm. life. Um, and But this one just seemed different. So I thought this could be a panic attack. And I thought, well, no, because I'm not feeling afraid. Mm -hmm. I'm not feeling anxious, but it was just full blown. So that paramedics came and they sat me down and checked me over <laughs> and they just kind of said there's nothing wrong with you mm. really so they sent me to bed like all oh, I sent myself to bed they left and mm -hmm. I huh. thought I'll just get some rest I'll feel better in the morning I woke up um, and I ended up from that point on having about 10 to 15 panic attacks a day for months. a day yeah and eventually that led to weariness just mm -hmm. exhausting because it's like sleep battling a life-threatening situation yeah. 15 times a day like wow. you just get exhausted so Does you really really feel like when you're having these panic attacks you really yes. feel like you're going to die yes you really do wow yeah wow. and the symptoms That's are frightening. very similar to a heart attack so oh my. all the things they list that you might feel during a heart was attack was there a trigger or something that would that See, you could relate to? Then? That's the thing with panic attacks, which is why they're so hard to get out of them, is there usually are not triggers, mm. like a gust of wind, like, or a knock yeah. on the door. Usually it's preceded by a hmm. thought early okay. on, yeah. um, but most of the time it's actually not. They can come out of the blue, they can wake you up in the middle of the night, they can hit you when you're doing something you enjoy and you're having fun. So that's the hard thing about panic attacks. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Did you have any experience with this before or other people that you knew of or is um, this totally new to you? No, it was kind of new to me. Like I, so I said, it must have been I'd, confusing. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was confusing because I thought, why is this happening to me? What is going on? Yeah. Am I losing my mind? Am I sick? Am I yeah. going crazy? Am yeah. I having a breakdown? Am right. I going to end up in the hospital? And of course, all of those thoughts, because I was losing my power and losing my ability to be who yeah. I'd always in been. In control. In control. <laughs> um, only made the panic and anxiety worse. And so really? once I was able to kind of get through the panic part of it, and I was able to kind of confront that and, and stop the panic attacks, I had generalized anxiety. So mm -hmm. I was constantly full of anxiety. Like, you know, that moment where you go, because you have to sit down and have a hard mm. conversation with somebody yeah. or, or not just nerves yeah. like, you know, being on television, but like nerves yeah. like, oh, this is, an, impending doom kind of nerves yeah. and it was like that constantly wow. constantly wow. fearful thoughts so now mm -hmm. you, you also mentioned OCD which mm -hmm. is obsessive compulsive disorder now yeah. how does that fit into this well I'm not quite 100% sure how it got to be that bad um, I did try antidepressants and had a reaction to it mm -hmm. and um, so I'm not sure if that was part of it but I um, just began noticing myself hiding Tylenol, hiding medication that was sitting out. Um, if I'd see a bottle of bleach, I'd just stare at it and go, <laughs> oh, I need to hide that. Oh um, double checking, triple checking, quadruple checking to see if I had, you know, the medicine was stored away safely. And the reason why I was doing that was because I was afraid I was going to hurt myself with it. And I knew that I was in despair and I was Really? very in a deep deep depression just mm -hmm. from the exhaustion of the anxiety and I was mentally ill like mm -hmm. my mind was sick yeah and um, but the OCD just took me like threw me off guard that never happened to me before in my life and um, so I so began you were s literally afraid that you might harm yeah. yourself mm -hmm. or yeah. your family your children yes. yeah so you mm -hmm. hid medication mm -hmm. you hid knives yeah. you hid yeah, wow. I would cry if I had to cook dinner Bleach. and use a knife, I would cry and I'd just tremble just holding the knife in case I did something irrational. Uh -huh. And it sounds so bizarre and it's a really hard thing to admit and to talk about. Mm -hmm. But the amount of people that suffer with what they call harm OCD, which is mm -hmm. actually the most common form yeah. of OCD, right. nobody talks about it. It's quite intense. Wow. And um, you aren't going to hurt yourself yourself and you aren't going to hurt those around you but it's such an irrational fear but it is fear. so mm. real yes. it is so real in the moment yeah so what's wow. agoraphobia what's that agoraphobia is when you're afraid of 
the outside world, so to speak. So afraid yeah. to leave your house. For me, it was almost afraid to leave my room. That was my safe place. My bed was the only place. Even to get up and go to the washroom, I was nervous to lock the door, you know, and hide myself away from people. And or to shower. Or to shower, said, yeah, because I was alone and I was, you know, no mm -hmm. one could hear me In or see confined me. confined space. Mm. In case I did something. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so it just became... Oh, you know, a trip to the grocery store was a huge event for me. Yeah, and driving? Driving was a huge event for me. School functions was a huge event for me. And uh, and this is from somebody who ran it all and did right. it all with confidence. Yeah. Like well, it was just, just like today, you are yeah. a great communicator. Yeah, yeah. thank you. The, yeah. It, the person you're describing just seems to be somebody else Oh, to yeah, me. yeah, absolutely. Thank God. Yes, hey? yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, uh, you know, that this is quite a story. I, I just want to say to our viewers, as I'm just listening to Sarah, uh, you know, there's bits and pieces in her story that every one of us can relate to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Maybe yes. not to this, yeah. the same state, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh, just shows you how fragile we can be at times. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we're going to hear more how from Sarah too. How intricately made we are and yeah. put together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Just want to, before we go to a break, I yeah. want to ask you this question. Sure. At what point did you realize that you were literally fighting for your life and you really needed help? I think the moment for me was when I pulled into the garage in my house with my kids in the car and I hesitated for a moment to turn off the ignition. Oh. And I just thought, okay. I can't help myself anymore. This is this is bad. So you were s borderline suicidal yeah. then oh, already by sure. that time. Oh, for sure. Yeah. If not, just exhausted. Just like exhausted. just that's sometimes Wanting those suicidal up, thoughts. Yeah. It's just exhaustion. You don't yeah. want to die. You just you're just tired. But you realized and at that point you needed mm -hmm. you really needed yeah, help. Yeah, I really needed help. And yeah. then I know you told me at that mm -hmm. point you just cried out to God. Yes. Because you'd yeah. already been to medical doctors. Yeah. Already yeah. had been on medication mm -hmm. that you had huge reactions yeah. to and you couldn't take them, yeah. you had to be off. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. God was going yeah. to be your source. I was in a trust God or die yeah. scenario. So <laughs> we're going to take a quick break here, but mm -hmm. when we come back, we're going to talk about your journey into wholeness, mm -hmm. okay? So if you want to watch these, we'll be right back. Did you know we have a new look to our website? Make sure to check it out. We have all the episodes of Lifeline Today, Dick and Jones Story, Life Apps, and more. Check out the new dickandjones.com. I want to read Isaiah 61.3 from the Voice Translation. It says, as for those who grieve, God has sent me to give them a beautiful crown in exchange for ashes, to anoint them with gladness instead of sorrow. And I love the way it says this in this translation, to wrap them in victory, joy, and praise instead of depression and sadness. Are you feeling like you're wrapped in depression and sadness today? Jesus wants to wrap you in his loving arms. He wants to wrap you in victory and peace and joy and praise. Please give us a call in the prayer center, 403-942-0123. We want to help you give all of your inner pain, all of your struggles to Jesus. Lay them at the foot of the cross. So give us a call or you can email us at prayercenter at Dick and Jones. Com. Amazing testimony today. We're listening to Sarah Ball. Yeah. And uh, what strikes me is what a wonderful mother and wife that we're talking to here, and a very, very capable person, and telling this story. And it sounds like somebody completely different, mm -hmm. Sarah. Yeah. Yeah, it totally. sounds like yeah. you're talking about someone else, yeah. but mm -hmm. this is you. Yeah, this is and me. And you went through this, but I, yeah. I just want to emphasize something. And if you need prayer, our phone center is always open. Prayer center's there, and we get lots of calls, Joan. You yeah. may want to be uh, listening to this, but also if you're getting ready to pray. recognizing yourself in this testimony, yeah. mm -hmm. go to so, the phone right now. Uh, there's help for you. It's just is absolutely amazing because 
uh, you here today mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are completely opposite of what you're describing. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and this has got to give our viewers hope. Yeah, yeah. And, well, it's certainly encouraging me. So yeah. uh, let's hear about how you really began to receive deliverance. Yeah. How did you come out of this? Well, I mean, when you're thrown into a situation like this, you're desperate. Like, you're yeah. absolutely desperate. And yeah. I thought to myself, I can either live here, and I saw many people just find, ex not excuses, because I don't want to undermine it, but just acceptance of this is who I am, I'm just an anxious person forever. But I'm pretty stubborn, and I just thought, no, I'm not going to be like this forever. Yeah. And so I just clung to God like it was um, my lifeline. Mm -hmm. And what God began to show me was that this is a whole healing of the whole person. So body, mind, and spirit, and how interconnected. Because sometimes we can over-spiritualize mental health, mm -hmm. and then we don't fully get the healing and deliverance we need, because we're just point. trying to pray it through. Mm -hmm. Or the Very opposite, good. you're just seeking doctors after doctor after chiropractors and essential yeah. oils and doing all this stuff yeah, for the physical right. body and not taking care of our spirits. So that was something that God Mm. led me to. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. what did you do uh, for your body? Well, I needed rest. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got to this place because I didn't did. know how to rest. <laughs> and I didn't know wow. how to Good mentally point. rest and take a break from responsibility. And I had an amazing husband who gave me the rest that I needed and really guarded it for me. I had to learn to speak up for myself and say, I need time. I just want to interject here. Yeah. You have a husband and five children. Mm -hmm. The guy must be amazing. He's a, he because is amazing. He must have walked you through this. <laughs> yes. So we yes. want to commend him right He's now. He's a hero. <laughs> Absolutely. Television. He's a big hero of the story. We should have had him on <laughs> yeah. the program yeah. as yeah. well, I think. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's so true. Yeah. And so rest was a big part of it and exercise. And my mm -hmm. doctor said 80% of all like depression really? and anxiety um, is effectively cured through exercise. They say it's oh. just as effective as antidepressants. Really? Yeah. Absolutely. Just releasing those endorphins. You're releasing endorphins. Oh, you're allowing your I body see. to move. You're mm -hmm. getting fresh air. You're taking deep breaths. Like yeah. it, your heart is, getting your is heart rate going. Up. And yeah, it's powerful. And I used to walk for my life. I have yeah. to go for a mental health walk, right? Not a fitness walk, but a mental health walk. Yeah. So that became a very uh, strong part of my routine of recovery and eating well. Yeah. Caffeine, Tell us about sugar. the first time you walked. Okay. You ventured out of your house to walk. Oh my goodness. Oh, I had a friend over. Yeah. She held my hand on the stairs. I got maybe three squares in the sidewalk. I had to stop for a moment. And she's like, you can do this. Walked another three squares. <laughs> yeah. See, yeah, I mean, you You're were so, so to afraid half a block. to go out of your house mm -hmm. wow. that this was a milestone yeah, for you huge. just to get out yeah. and walk. And one day you was half a block, and then it was a block. And but you yeah. said something about caffeine and sugar. Yeah. And you had to cut that down? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, is that generally the case, or <laughs> well, is that if, because if you were If you're sensitive? struggling with anxiety and your heart's racing and you're, you know, this and that, those well, kind of stimulant. things just stimulate that I kind see. of, I yeah. Okay. yeah. Not everybody. And now I love my coffee. <laughs> I drink I it with great joy. Say, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a fan back. of yeah. Tim Hortons. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You only have to give it up mm. for a season. <laughs> yeah, for a season. <laughs> but nutrition was really, yeah, really huge. Uh, yeah. important. Yeah, well, did you have a... Were you not eating properly as um, I possible? was. Um, I definitely was, but I just started realizing the connection between bad foods and good okay. foods for me. Right. Yeah, so. Good. Mm -hmm. Did you yeah. see a dietitian who helped you with that kind of thing, or did you no, just kind of work that I out? I just kind of worked it out myself and just from reading other articles and reading a lot of literature on it and stuff like that so well, you can read yeah. a lot on the internet about anything well nowadays. you can <laughs> and there becomes yeah. quite an obsession about food and anxiety but it's yeah. so much more than just that well that's yeah. just the physical side yeah now. you did really have a spiritual mm -hmm. mental emotional mm -hmm. healing mm -hmm. as well right so yeah. talk about that well it's all connected like if god just wanted us to be spiritual beings he wouldn't have given us the bodies that we have mm -hmm. we're human beings we have a body and, the mind. and our mind right and so he, he made it that way because it's a beautiful three-part connection, how it mm -hmm. all flows together. And uh, so part of the spiritual healing for me, because I would honestly consider myself to be in a very strong spiritual place. I was mm -hmm. a ministry leader. I spent a lot of time in the Word. I loved yeah. God. I didn't have any issues. I did everything that a good Christian was supposed to do. So it wasn't like I was necessarily lacking. But at that time, God began to show me foundation, the foundations of my mm -hmm. Christianity because I came, became a Christian later on in my life. So just the really solid basis of who he was. And there was a point where I even went through the Psalms and I just would write God is and whatever however David described him, I would just write that down. And, mm. and so, you know, That's rediscovering who God was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
very Absolutely. simple but very powerful yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and then you really talked a lot about um healing the mind mm -hmm. and uh taking your thoughts captive yeah. and that kind of thing yeah. because i i know if you're depressed mm -hmm. there's a little yeah devil sitting yeah. on your shoulder just filling your mind yeah. full of negative exactly. things exactly and you know we can't mm -hmm. receive that yeah. so how did you deal with that well i mean our minds are an organ of our body mm -hmm. they're physical our Brains are physical brain substance. It's mm -hmm. not like it's this cloud, right? And yeah. there's, and so we have to understand that when our mind is ill or our mind is sick or weak, the enemy just has a f like, whoosh, a you know, a foot in. Oh open yeah. Door. So I mean, that's how that's connected. But um, when they talk about renewing the mind in the Word of God, yeah. What I learned through my experience is God's just not saying that as a nice fluffy thing like renew your mind. It's actual a physical change that happens wow. in your mind which wow. is why i'm so healed right now because my mind has been not only spiritually renewed but physically renewed right. and um dr caroline leaf is a huge lifeline for me she's a christian neuroscientist yes. who studies the brain and what mm -hmm. happens with thoughts and negative mm -hmm. thoughts depression and that really began to um, make me realize how serious it was for me to take hold of what was happening in my head mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. yeah mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, I think this is the